one of the worst times when you're driving is when you hear a hissing sound, a hissing noise of one of your tires losing pressure, a puncture. I don't know if you drive a sophisticated car. I'm told that those cars that actually on the dashboard show you a sign that uh, a tire has lost or is losing pressure. You know, you think of the miles ahead of you. You think of the, the purposes where you are going, your destination. And you think of all the hurdles of losing one tire. It's true. It's a minority. It's one tire. You have three other tires. But you do know how much time loss you're going to have trying to change one tire that is hissing all the pressure out. Well, welcome to the Shepherd's Heart, where we try to understand leadership from looking at the lives of ordinary men like you and I who are leaders in the Bible. And today we are looking at bad boys of the New Testament, trying to, in this Shepherd's Heart series, trying to look at lives of bad boys that are in the New Testament and how the leaders around them reacted to this. Today we look at three characters. I think one you know very well by name, Demas. Demas has deserted me because he loved the world, Paul says. But there are two others, and allow me to open to 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 1 verse 15. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. And then in chapter 4, we read um, Demas, uh, chapter 4, verse 9. Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me. One of the toughest times in a leader's life, in a leader's journey, is when they are deserted. It's at many levels. There is the loneliness of being abandoned because you have one uh, person who has gone. Secondly, is the compromise to the mission. You had a full team of four tires that were all working well to get you to the destination. One has gone. There's the, the cold wind coming because of the dissertation or the loneliness. But there's also the lack of efficiency and effectiveness to be able to go. There's a lost time because of having to repair or to change this tire. But there's also the emotional doldrum that comes. You know, in modern society, in leadership, they say, people don't leave organizations. They leave bad bosses. And so when somebody deserts you, Aphigelas, Hermogenes, or Demas, it's easy to look to yourself and, and begin a, a journey of self-pity. But thirdly, is just this overwhelming understanding and questioning of where are they now? Are they okay? You see, Demas had been somebody who was a faithful companion of Paul, a disciple of Paul. They had been to missions together. And then suddenly, because he loved the world. You know, it's one thing if somebody leaves, you know, like John Mark. He's not with you, but he's with Barnabas. He's somewhere doing something useful. He's still in the faith. But when you read of a Demas who has deserted you because he loved this world, the pain for you, but the pain that you have for them and what they are going through can really distract you as a leader. I don't know in your leadership if you've received resignation letter from resignation letter resignation letter. In fact, blessed are you if you get a resignation letter. Because some just depart. Physically, they are no more. Actually, that's not the worst part. The worst part is when they've, they've checked out in their minds, in their hearts, in their performance, but they are still physically there. They've not resigned, but they've moved on. And you know that you have been deserted. What do you do as a leader? How do you go on? Bad boys of the New Testament. But how did Paul react? The fact that he's writing 2 Timothy 
to encourage Timothy. The fact that he's able to recall that there are many others like Timothy who are going on strong. Even when he feels like he's being poured out like a drink offering, he does say something in the conclusion of this letter, that I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You see, he didn't do those things in normal and rosy circumstances. It was in the midst when he is in prison that he has been abandoned. When he, his life is coming to an end, when he writes this last letter, that he's keeping on running to cut the tape uh, with all the speed and all the strength that he has, in spite of the fact that there are those like Phygelus, Hermogenes, and Demas. So leader in your business, and people have conspired and there's been a bus strike or, you know, or, or a, a, a leaving, or somebody has come and pushed your best staff and, and you know, given them a raise that, that you are unable to march, you're in good company with Paul. My own counsel as a young leader would be, I'm learning. Be grateful for the time that you had with them and the investment that they were able to, 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 to put in the organization. But then, check back, look back and check, are there things I could have done better to serve them as a leader? But after that, give them up to God and keep running to fight the good fight, to be able to say, I've fought the good fight, I've run the race, I have kept the faith. You may mistake her for an Italian by her second name, Bashir, but also from her sense of fashion and so on and so forth. She is a celebrated uh, pastor here in our church. Her name is Kezia Bashir. Warm welcome to the Shepherd's Hut and uh, the series of the bad boys of the New Testament. Tell me what you thought of those bad boys that we're looking at and... Uh, Field one or two questions as you, as you do that. Okay, thank you so much for having me in this session. Um, what I'd say that I've observed from these um, three um, characters, that's Vigilas, Hermogenes, and Dimas, uh -huh. is just um, in our interaction with people, you may find people who may desert you on the way. And there's a repercussion to that or effect to that. So we see for Paul that was shared there, that the things that you just shared on the loneliness, because we see in Second Timothy, as you continue mm -hmm. to verse 16, he says that Onesiphorus came through for him mm -hmm. and he felt refreshed. Yeah. But then I was wondering, what about the rest of the ministry? Does that have an effect or effect to our ministry? Because that for him, he felt that loneliness, but then he felt refreshed when this household and this family came around for him. Yeah. Yes. So have you seen it and how does that affect the ministry? You know... The ministry is very real and we don't always share openly that it has those times when you feel really low because um, of, of our departing like that of Hermogenes, uh, Phygelus and Demas. Um, but God has an interesting way of just refreshing you, encouraging you with an Onesiphorus, you know. He and his household just go out of their way to be refreshers. Uh, to Paul. So I agree with you, it does affect the leader, and I know we're looking at it from the vantage point of a church leader, but it's really anywhere. And wherever you are, when there are those who desert, desert you, um, you do feel low. But if you look carefully, God in his sovereign has given you an onesiphorus, and you might not notice this because you're so distracted by the pain of being left, that you don't realize, ha, huh, he is a jewel who is always you know, refreshing, looking out for me till he found me, you know, and, and seeking to spur me on. Mm -hmm. So we must be on the lookout for that. But does it affect the organization? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It does slow momentum. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I think you see in Paul is that he loses sleep for one night with this loneliness, but somehow picks himself together and moves on. Mm -hmm. Because there's a sense in which they've deserted you. 
but there's a sense in which they've also deserted the mission. And because of that, you must move on. Because the vision must be accomplished with one tire now off. You must, you must appreciate that there'll be time lost in removing the tire, trying to repair it, it doesn't work. Uh, and then you, you say, oh, I have to just allow this one who has deserted to, to, for me to accept that they've deserted and to put another spare wheel now and, and make it the fourth wheel and keep going. And time is lost there, momentum is lost, you know, and the organization does suffer uh, some loss of, you know, enthusiasm, productivity because of this changing of tires, of, of accepting this one now has deserted. But because of the vision, the vision that has been abandoned, we must stay the course. And that's why you found me making a big deal about for the good fight. Yes. You know, finish the race, keep the faith. Yes. We must keep on. Yes, I agree with what you're saying because I was seeing of how, I think it's Acts 16 where Paul is sharing about this experience in Asia for Fujilas and Hamogenes. Mm -hmm. And he was sharing how for, um, for two years, that he had to experience this opposition. Mm -hmm. and But then for three months, he was preaching boldly, mm -hmm. even when people were against this kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing even, I was being encouraged that even when you face people who are deserting you or people who are opposing you, that you need to find that, to, that um, fight to keep on, mm -hmm. just to keep on and just no matter how long it may be. Because for Paul, it was that two years mm -hmm. when he was in Asia. So I'm just imagining like being somewhere in the middle of such where people are against you mm. but then for two years he went on and on and we see that the gospel was continued to be preached mm. so i think that's something that i'd say personally i'm encouraged that if i was to experience that in ministry i know that i should not hold because you know most times i've had experiences where i just want to stop there mm. and feel and like i can't speak Pity party. Yes, and like I can't move on. Mm. I am done with ministry. I'm mm. leaving ministry. Mm. But then, like with Paul, you just continue that ministry and just finding a community mm. around you who can encourage you. So um, maybe I'd ask, what encouragement would you offer to someone in such a position currently? Well, even though you're the leader and the vision bearer and vision carrier in, in whatever leadership role you have, even if it is a family one, you must continue. Yes, there are times to wipe your tears, you have been left, uh, nee, 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 but you must go on. Because you realize you have an honesty for us to encourage you. But also, I don't know if you've read in the same letter, mm -hmm. no one with, was with me at my defense, but the Lord stood with me. Yes. If you have that walk with the Lord where you become cognizant that even with this dissertation, first the mission is not over, but the good Lord is standing by your side. You're able to continue. Mm -hmm. So two things that you should do as a leader, whatever context that you're leading in, one, you must recognize the, the, the import of the honesty for us that the Lord sends you away to encourage you. And sometimes you take them for granted. And then secondly, to have such a walk with the Lord that you 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 even in your deepest loneliness, when you're deserted, you realize the Lord is standing with me, the shepherd's heart.